Hey, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Hourglass Crochet Cowl, which is a free pattern you'll find on Yarnspirations.com. You can see here that there is both a hat and a cowl to this pattern, but today we're just demonstrating how to make the cowl, so be sure to look for the matching hat on Yarnspirations. To make this pattern, we need one Karen Colorama Ogo. Here you can see one in the blue Mustang colorway, which is what I used, but of course you can pick your favorite. You'll also need a US 9 millimeter hook. That might be an M or an N depending on the manufacturer. This was a US M 9 millimeter by Susan Bates with a bamboo handle. You'll also of course need your standard crochet supplies like scissors and a yarn needle. So let's get started. This hourglass crochet cowl is made by working straight through the yarn, starting at one end and just crocheting as the yarn lies. So if you prefer to color block this yarn and get even stripes, you can simply change colors every six rows. However, as you can see here, I just worked straight through the skein. Because of the way mine laid, I was able to get all five colors in there, but I think if I had had a bigger chunk there at the beginning, I might have ended up with only four. So again, the color scheme is up to you. In addition to the written instructions, you'll also find charted instructions included with the written pattern on Yarnspirations.com. You can see here it's a reduced sample of the pattern, but it does lay it out in crochet symbols if you prefer that style of instructions. So let's go ahead and get started crocheting our Hourglass Crochet Cowl. Before we begin, we need to open our Karen Colorama Ogo. So to do that, we simply take off the label. And if you'd like, you can set aside the section on the bottom right there, which has all your yarn info. Then we need to have a pair of scissors on hand and find the point at the bottom where you can see that you can pull the two sides apart. The yarn is all connected and each color goes right into the next color throughout. But we do, of course, have a beginning and an end. So as we pull this apart, that right there is what we want to look for, that little plastic tab. I'm just going to use one hand to sort of hold on to that and hold my space. And then I'm going to use my scissors to go ahead and snip that line. Then I can go ahead and just pull that right out of my Ogo. So from there, I'm ready to go ahead and start crocheting. Or if you do want to break it up and use specific colors, you can go ahead and pull those colors apart and use them in the order desired. So to begin our hourglass crochet cowl, we're going to start with the slip knot on the hook and then we're going to make 66 foundation double crochets. So the way I like to do that is I start with a chain of two. It's not going to count as a stitch. Then I yarn over and I go into that back loop, not the front or back loop, but rather the underneath loop of the first chain I made right next to the slip stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. That loop right there counts as the chain at the bottom of my first stitch. So then I yarn over and pull a loop up through that chain and then yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two for our first foundation double crochet. Now, since we're going to be working in the round, I really like to go ahead and put a stitch marker right in the top of that first stitch so that as I come around, I don't get confused from that chain two, and I also don't get confused from any slip stitches and start thinking those are stitches. So to continue on with the rest of our foundation double crochets, we yarn over, and then you insert your hook under the two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch. Yarn over and pull a loop up. And now we have the chain at the bottom of our second stitch. So we yarn over and pull a loop up through the chain and then yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. So we continue that for a total of 66 foundation double crochets. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for a reduced sample for our demo today, but you should stop when you have a total of 66 foundation double crochets. Then simply put another stitch marker here in the last one. Again, that way the first and last stitch of each round will be marked. There we go. And then we want to go ahead and join with a slip stitch to work in the round. So since we've already finished the first row of crocheting, but now we want to turn it into a round, I recommend you lay it out very carefully so you can bring it up to slip stitch to that very first stitch made. Nice and easy to find because we've got that stitch marker there. I'm just gonna move it to the side here so I can make my slip stitch. But you just want to be careful that you don't get a twist. You want to make sure 
that you don't have any twists here in the bottom of your cowl. Now, as you can see, this leaves a gap here at the bottom of the first row. So what you're going to do at the end when you're ready to weave in your ends is use this tail end and a sewing needle or a yarn needle, I should say, and simply use that tail end to sew to the bottom of that last stitch you made right there. Cinch it up, weave in that end, and it'll be all nice and closed at the bottom of your first round there. So for now, we're going to go ahead and continue with round two. Okay, so to begin round two, we're going to start with a chain one, and then we're going to front post double crochet or double crochet front post around the first stitch. Now we've got that first stitch marked and we've got our chain two there. So we wanna make sure that we don't work around that one, but rather yarn over and go from front to back around the post of that very first stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. Now this is the new first stitch of round two. So we wanna find that stitch marker that marked the first stitch of round one and move it on up to this stitch right there. Alrighty, and I'll go ahead and get my hook back in my loop here. And now we make a half double crochet in the next stitch. Now we've already worked around the post of this stitch, so we wanna make sure not to work into the top of it, but rather to go to the next stitch. So we simply yarn over and work a half double crochet in the top of the next stitch in the standard format, going under those top two loops. From here, we begin the repeat that will take us the rest of the way around round two. We double crochet front post or front post double crochet around the next stitch. So we've already worked into that one. So we come over here to this next one and go around that post from the front and work off our first front post double crochet. I'll need to pull off a little bit more yarn here. There we are. And then half double crochet in the stitch after that. Again, we want to make sure that we skip over the top of that stitch that we worked our post stitch around. It is already considered worked. So there's that half double crochet. So let's do another one of those repeats together. Yarn over, go in on the side of the next stitch, come up, up on the other side of it here. Let's get down around that all the way there. Yarn over and pull up our loop and yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. Then go to the next stitch and work a half double crochet right in the top. Continue repeating those two stitches all the way around until you get to the end. And at the end, of course, you should have 66 stitches again, 33 of them post stitches and 33 of them half double crochets. So now we're ready to begin round three. Rounds three and four are going to be exactly the same. Simply chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. I still want to go ahead and move up those stitch markers when I work in those stitches so I can keep track of them, but simply single crochet in each stitch around. And just a note, you're going to work into those post stitches as well as those half double crochets. Don't try and put those stitches into those unworked tops behind those post stitches. Just go ahead and work right into the tops of the post stitches as well as the tops of the half double crochets. Join with a slip stitch and I'll see you when it's time for round five. Now, here we are at the end of round four. You can see I've worked that first foundation round and then the round with post stitches and then two rounds of simple single crochet in each stitch around. Now, as I said, with this cowl pattern, I did let the yarn flow and keep on working through the skein. And I wanted to go ahead and show you where that color join is right here. You can see how beautifully smooth this is. It just goes right from the blue to that really dark gray, no knots, no ties, just one color right into the other. So it's perfect for continuing to crochet with. And that is how I made this cowl. However, I feel like the black or dark gray is gonna be really difficult to see for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and pull this next color off and go to the next color for this next round. To separate your ogos, what you simply want to do is grasp the two colors here where they kind of overlap. And as you can see, I'll just gently start teasing them apart here. And you can see how one sort of cones into the other a little bit. But once you start pulling them apart, they really do come apart really beautifully. And we can see another join right there where the green and the black come together. So I can simply take my scissors and cut them apart at the join and start again here with this color. So to switch to the new color, I actually went ahead and pulled out that slip stitch join. And now I'm going to go ahead and make that join with our new color here. This gives us a really nice clean color change if that's the look you're going for. 
then I'll simply drop that end as well. There we go. And then I will weave these two ends in at the end of the project, or if you prefer, after the next couple rows, whatever works for you. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and tuck those inside so they're nicely out of my way. So let's continue with round five. We're going to start again with a chain one, and then we are going to work a single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So we go right into that stitch we joined to, and then I'll go ahead and move up that stitch marker here. It set it just aside while I was finishing that up here. All right, and then single crochet in the very next stitch. Then we're going to work a double crochet front post around each of the next two stitches two rounds below. So that means we're going to be going around that first row of single crochets that we made. So we can go ahead and yarn over because we know we're going to be making a double crochet, but a front post double crochet around the stitch two rounds below means not around this single crochet, but around the one right underneath it. So just as before, even though it's a little harder to see with single crochets, we wanna go in on one side of the stitch and pop up to the front on the other side. Then we simply yarn over, pull that loop through just as before, and finish off our double crochet. So we do that again around the very next stitch. So we yarn over, find that next single crochet, two rows below, and go right around that stitch. There we are. Then we single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Now, just as before, when we've worked around a stitch, we don't wanna work into the stitch behind it when we've worked around it for a post stitch, I should say, we don't want to work in the stitch behind it unless the instructions tell us to. Typically that would be for increasing or a more elaborate crochet cable pattern. So for us, for this pattern, we're gonna skip over those two right there because we've just in, done two post stitches and we know that's the next stitch right there. So right there is we want where we want to put the first of those two single crochets and then in the next stitch, we put the second one. And that is our repeat one single crochet in each of the next two stitches, one, two, so you'll note that actually means four of them together there, then front post double crochet around each of the next two stitches, so we need to make sure that we are coming over, find that next stitch, and then go down to the next stitch it's worked into, make that first front post double crochet, and then around the next one. Pull up a little bit more yarn here from our Ogo. And then we are ready to finish our repeat with single crochets in each of the next two stitches. So I always just like to flip it over, make sure I'm skipping those two. It helps me find that next one. And there is one and two. So that is our repeat here for round five. Two single crochets in the next two stitches two front post double crochets around the next two stitches, two rows below, and then two single crochets in the next two stitches. So that is the series of six that we repeat all the way around for round five. So we'll finish with single crochets in the last two stitches, and I'll see you at the end of round five. So here I am at the end of round five. You can see I finished with a single crochet in each of those last two stitches, so now when you combine it with those first two, we're back to having four single crochets between those post stitches. And that's sort of the division of the pattern that we want for this round. So after that, of course, we're just going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch. And then for round six, we're gonna do the same thing as we did for round three. Chain one and simply single crochet in each stitch around. So I'll see you when we're ready for round seven. So now let's begin round seven. Round seven begins again with a chain one, and then we're going to work our front post double crochet around the next front post double crochet two rounds below. So if we go and look, we see that one's all the way over here, and that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to start creating that hourglass cable shape. So we yarn over and insert our hook right around the post of that post stitch. Yarn over and pull up our loop and finish off our double crochet. And then we want to make sure to go ahead and put a stitch marker in this one because it's our first stitch of this round. Now, normally I would go ahead and move this stitch up, but I'm going to leave it there for just a minute. I'm going to show you why. Go ahead and put that one in there right now. Now, the next thing we do after we make that front post double crochet is work a single crochet in the next four stitches. But it's very easy to accidentally 
um, end up skipping too many stitches here. You have to remember this is the stitch we joined to. This is our first stitch. Since we worked this post stitch, this one is now officially considered worked because we've got our first stitch of the round. So we want to come to this next one right here. It's very easy to accidentally end up in that third one. We want to make sure that we're actually in that second stitch of the previous row. So once you've got that in there, you can go ahead and pull that stitch marker out, but it's just handy. Let me tell you from experience to go ahead and leave that there. So as I say, after we make that front post double crochet, then we single crochet in the next four stitches. So we've got one, two, three, and four. And just to double check that you're in the right spot, that fourth one should be in the stitch right after that post stitch right there. So we've kind of skipped right over that one. So now it's time to come back and grab that one. So we're going to yarn over and go the same direction, even though it's back past where we were, we want to come from the same direction, go behind that post with our hook, yarn over and make our double crochet. So those six stitches, front post double crochet, four single crochets, front post double crochet is our repeat for round seven. So let's go ahead and do that one more time together. We yarn over and we find that next post stitch, that first post stitch of the next set of two there. So we want to stretch our hook all the way over there and come behind that stitch. And it can help if you find that you, the loops at the tops of your stitches when you make these are getting a little loose. It can really help to go ahead and push the yarn together. It's just yarn. It's squishy. So we can go ahead and hold those loops a little closer as you work off that double crochet. And that will help keep those from opening up too much. Now we need to work a single crochet in the next four stitches. So let's go ahead and check our last round here to make that a little easier. You can see right there, we worked into that stitch with our single crochet. So then we had a post stitch, then another post stitch. So that right there, get my fingers on that stitch, is where we're going to start working the single crochets again. So got a little turned around on my hook there. There we go. There's one, two, three, and four. And again, quick double check. That fourth one went into the stitch right after that post stitch. So we're nowhere in the right spot again. So we can yarn over and come back and get that last one that we passed over there for our sixth stitch of our repeat. Wanted to be a half double crochet instead of a double crochet. There we go. All right. So again, we've got our repeat front post double crochet, four single crochets, post front post double crochet. So just continue that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of round seven. So here I am at the end of round seven. I have finished my last repeat with that last front post double crochet. So I just want to point out that means that that very last stitch, that last marked stitch kind of gets skipped over. It's considered worked because we still have the same number of stitches that we've made in this round. But even though this guy's coming from all the way over there, it is still, of course, our last stitch. So we go ahead and move that stitch marker up and then we can join with a slip stitch to that first post stitch we made. Moving on to round eight, it's simply chain one and single crochet in each stitch again. So I'll see you when we're ready for round nine. So after that round of single crochet, we're ready for round nine. We start again with a chain one, and now we're going to work a front post double crochet around the front post double crochet two rounds below. So that is the one right here. If I can put my finger right behind it is the one we stretched over to get. Now we're going to be going basically straight down around that one. So we make that double crochet there. So then we know that this is our new first stitch of the round, but we're going to be going there next. So I'm going to leave that there for just a minute because we want to single crochet in each of those next four stitches. So I know that one's the, the one I skip because it's officially our first stitch. And then when I go to that second one, and now that I've got that in place, and I don't have to worry about it anymore. I can go ahead and move that stitch marker on up here to our first stitch, the top of that post stitch. So I've got one of those single crochets. Now two, three, four. There we are. Then we single front post double crochet rather around the next front post double crochet two rounds below. So before we were stretching over, this time it's the same set of stitches, but we don't have the stretching forward and back. We just have to drop right down the stitch two rows below. There we are. 
So that is our six stitch repeat. Like I said, pretty much the same as round seven, but no stretching over. Now we're just going straight down, four single crochets, straight down again. So let's do that one more time together. We yarn over, find the next front post double crochet and work around that one. And then we know we're going to single crochet in the next four stitches. So let's make sure we skip over. There's that last post stitch from the previous repeat, the post stitch from to begin this repeat. So this is the next stitch right here. We've got, whoop, get that again. One, two, a little more yarn here, three and four. And then we finish it up with another post stitch around the post stitch, two rows below. There we are. I wanna make sure we just get around the post of that stitch. There we go. So that is our six stitch repeat that we'll repeat around for round nine. After round nine, round 10 is simply another round of single crochet, just as we've been doing in between our cable rounds here. But if we look at our finished cowl, we can see, whoop, let me make sure it's turned around the right way here. So we're going the same direction I crocheted. Okay, in the original, it went this direction. So we have worked up through here now. You can see here, this is where those lines pulled over. And now we have worked around uh, the where we're just working straight down into those there for round nine. So as I said, round 10 is simply another round of single crochet that we've been working all in between all our other cable rounds. But then round 11 is just another repeat of round nine, lengthening up those hourglass cables there. Round 12, another round of single crochet. So let's go ahead and work on those and I'll come back for round 13 where we have to change our pattern a little bit again. So on our little sample here, I've just worked through round 10, but like I said, round 11 is a repeat of round nine and round 12, of course, is another round of single crochet. So for our demo here, we're going to jump on to round 13. Round 13 starts with a chain one, and then we're going to single crochet in each of the first two single crochets. So we wanna make sure to work right back into that first marked stitch, and then move that stitch marker on up. There we go. And then into the next one for the second single crochet. And then we're going to front post double crochet around the first front post double crochet of round two, two rounds below. So just as before, when we'd pass over that second one, we had to come back and get it. Now we've kind of passed over this one and we're gonna come back and get this guy. That will help create that hourglass shape. We've worked out and now we're pulling those sides back in. So we want to yarn over and find that very first post stitch of the round back down here. Go right under that post in the same direction and finish off that double crochet. There we are. Then we are going to front post double crochet around the next front post double crochet two rounds below. So as I said, we split them apart. Now we're bringing them back together. So now we're going to jump all the way over to this guy right here. We'll go ahead and work that one off. There we are. Push that a little bit further away so it flows off a little bit easier. There we go. Okay. So to finish off our repeat, we need to work a single crochet in each of the next two stitches. But we wanna make sure that we skip over those stitches because we've worked those two post stitches now. So one and two post stitches. So here's the next stitch. So there's one single crochet and a second single crochet. So now we've got our six stitch repeat for round 13. Single crochet in two stitches, front post double crochet in the one you've passed, front post double crochet in the next one, two single crochets. So let's do that again. We start our repeat with two single crochets. So there's one, two, here we go. Then we front post double crochet around the one we passed over. Then we front post double crochet around the next one. And again, if you find that those post stitches really wanna pull up and be really leggy and loose, go ahead and squish your project together so that you can make that stitch just as tight as you like. There we go. Then flip it over, make sure you skip over those two stitches because you work two post stitches. So you can come to the next stitch, I work one single crochet and then a single crochet in the one after that. So if I pull that up a little bit here, do a little hand blocking, 
you can see how we are pulling back in our sides here for round 13. So two single crochets, two front post double crochets, and two single crochets is our repeat for round 13. Round 14 will be simply another round of single crochet. So I'll see you when we're ready for round 15. So now we're ready for round 15. We're going to start again with a chain one. And now we're going to be working our single crochets in this round in the back loop only. So that means if we look at the top of a stitch, there's always those two loops at the top of the stitch. The one closest to us, the crocheter, is the front loop. The one furthest away in the back is the back loop. It doesn't matter from which angle you're looking at the stitch, the front loop is always the one closest to you and the back loop is always the one furthest away. So we want to go ahead and work single crochets in the back loop only. So I'm going to insert my hook just right under that back loop, right in the middle of the stitch. So only it gets on top of my hook and then I can finish my single crochet as normal. Then I'll go ahead of course and move up my stitch marker. And then I need to do that again in the next stitch, right in the center. So I go under just that back loop. Then we're going to work a front post double crochet around each of these two front post double crochets, two rows below. So we yarn over, drop down around that next post stitch. And there's one. And there's two. So now we're sort of bringing those nice up back together, just like we were at the beginning. So then we need a back loop single crochet in each of the next two stitches. We want to flip that over and make sure that we are skipping the stitches that we need to for our post stitches and then go under just the back loop for a single crochet in each of the next two. There we go. And that is our six stitch repeat for round 15. Two back loop only single crochets, two front post double crochets, two back loop only single crochets. So let's do that one more time together. Two back loop only single crochets, one, two, two front post double crochets, one, and two. Make sure we skip over those stitches and back loop single crochets in each of the next two stitches. So just repeat that all the way around for round 15. Round 16, we're back to another round three repeat, single crochet in each stitch around. So I'll see you when it's time for round 17. Okay, so I just worked a round of single crochet for round 16, so now we're ready for round 17. We're going to chain one and half double crochet in the first stitch. So yarn over and simply go into that first marked stitch for a half double crochet. There we are, and then I'll go ahead and move up this stitch marker. There we go. And then, to continue around, we double crochet in the next stitch. And from there, we begin our repeat that takes us all the way around round 17. Half double crochet in the next stitch and double crochet in the stitch after that. Probably the easiest round of the entire pattern. So continue on around and I will see you when we're ready for round 18. So with round 17 finished, we have just one round left to finish our cowl. We start with a chain one and then double crochet in the first stitch, working right in the top of that half double crochet we made. There we are. Now with the only, with a chain one, that does pull it down a little bit, but that's totally fine. There we go. Then we front post double crochet around the next stitch. So now we're going to be working around that double crochet. So we just go around it as we did before and make our double crochet. And then we have our repeat, double crochet in the next stitch, the top of the half double crochet, and then front post double crochet around the double crochet. So this creates a really simple ribbing that matches the ribbing that we did at the very beginning. When you get to the end, you can simply join and finish off and weave in your ends. But don't forget to go back and use that very first tail to close up the bottom of your cowl. And that's how to crochet the Karen Hourglass Crochet Cowl. Don't forget to look for the matching hat 
and try out Karen Colorama Ogo for a real tangle-free quick start experience in crochet. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.